Hello, I'm Dawn. This is Yarn is a Sport. And it is time to play ball. It has been a couple of weeks. I am really trying to get on a regular schedule. It just seems like, as Carrie Penny would say, life. Um, I am no longer in Florida. I am wearing a wool um, acrylic. I think it's acrylic. Um, I want to say Brene, but this sweater is like 25, 30 years old. It's a brioche stitch um, that's it's got a raglan sleeve. I believe the pattern is from Vogue Knitting. I'm pretty sure, but it may have been from another knitting magazine. Um, anyway, I want to thank everyone for um, watching. Again, I know I've been really irregular, and I will try to be better about that. This is probably going to go over my goal of 20 minutes. Let's see what I can get done. Finished up the cowl. Let me rephrase that. The cowl ended with a Sheridan shawl. This is by Kimberly McAlinden. It was sponsored by Long Island Yarn and Farm. It was Zoom calls for those that were in uh, the cowl. I had a great time. Um, Tabitha from Long Island Yarn and Farm has a great following. Um, they're really nice ladies. Um, I was, I probably set myself up to begin with, psyched myself out because of that long cable at the bottom. Um, the shawl is, the design is just chef's kiss. It's, it's, I really love the idea. Now, I also probably set myself up in that, um, they said DK, I ordered what was a DK, but to me it was more of a fingering. I mean, it was that much less. Um, I wanted to, a lighter weight because of the warm weather seasons. Um, but this shawl has an I-cord neck. It has five faux braids that go in a pentagon. Um, there's some short rows at one between, over a braid between two. So you can wear it a little bit longer one way. You can uh, wear it longer in the back if you flip it around. And where I'm anxious to wear it is diagonal. Um, I had a lighter weight. I may need to rip back my short rows and um, I did finish the neckline. I may need to rip back my short rows and um, add to this. Um, it's supposed to be um, just above the elbow and then you have a four inch cable and it is what I call a Gaelic cable, very intricate uh, for uh, cables, you know, ropes, cords that intertwine in different ways. Um, and it's so beautiful. I really want to finish it. I am, however, not going to do as the design says where you knit and you uh, integrate it on as you knit it. I, I'm i just not going to do that. Much like an I-cord, I'm, I'm just not going to do that. Um, I have knit, re-knit, ripped, re-knit. This is like number four. And um, I do have troubles with my vision. And um, I don't know if it's available to everyone. I know that there are 
um, little videos that, that Kimberly did so you could see techniques. But she did say with the cable that she knit it all 24 rows and spoke out what she was doing as she knit it and tried to do it at a pace that if you were comfortable, you could keep up with, which is brilliant because I think that's a lot of where I was getting lost was going back and forth between the graph and looking at my knitting, that change of focus when you're doing something that complicated, it can be frustrating. Um, so I did tell her that I was really going to try to finish it very soon and do it with the cable as it was designed because it's a beautiful cable. I just want to wear it so much that I'm, I'm frustrated and, um, thinking about shortcutting. So I'm, I'm going to try not to. While I was ripping and knitting and frogging and, um, I did, uh, do, this is not blocked yet, but I did do a complimentary, uh, tea for this. It's like a little summer tea and it's, uh, very similar to, uh, pattern that I test knit by uh, Jojo de Bomb, which was the Aphrodite tea. It's um, basically knit side to side, and you put the two pieces together. I did this one different in that I used the faux cable from the um, shawl, the Sheridan shawl as the um, trim and I knit from the side, um, put live stitches on a cord, knit across the neckline, went back to the live stitches that were being held and then joined the live stitches to finish. Um, the sides then are seamed and I trust the yarn caddy in his opinion in that he doesn't knit or crochet but he can tell you his opinion and he said you know I, I just don't know that I like the way it's finished on the sides so I ended up just doing um what I call a faux kitchener because well it does I don't think you'll be able to see it but it the way I did it is not a typical kitchener I I, did, I have a way of doing it where you take two and you go down and do t anyway um that needs to be um, blocked and I have not done that yet, but I am pleased with it and anxious to finish the, the Sheridan shawl to go with that. Um, I do want to say I, I really like the uh, summer t-shirt that um, Jojo the Bomb Aphrodite um, I have done it several times. I've done it several ways. This time I did change not only the way it was constructed as far as the way I knit it. It's typically writ knit in two panels that are joined at the um, shoulders and at the sides. I did it, as I said, where it, it's just continuous. Um, it only has the two side seams. But the pattern is easy enough to interpret and change the braiding if you want, that you could do just about anything with it. So I highly recommend that pattern. Um, then I took up the challenge by Lynn Ann of Nina's Nats Crochet to... Um, Crochet for me, 2023. And I had this completed so that it was hip length all the way up. I had the shoulders joined 
and was working on sleeves and then I thought no I didn't like the way the sleeves are turning out I'm just going to continue from uh, in the round from where it was and when I went to block I found an error that was really obvious so I had to frog that all the way back and I frogged like 24 inches off of it it had a, a front two fronts and a back panel with this, this uh, openings for the sleeves so I really want to get this done for summer as well um someone made the comment that maybe it was the color and yeah I don't think so it's me then um I am working on an Afghan uh, blanket for Camp Boggy Creek. This bag was given to me graciously by Lynn Ann, again, of Nina's Nats Crochet. Uh, this was originally and still is through Nancy of She's Got Yarn Too. Um, I promised her 12 blankets this year. I have two completed, which is January, February. This one I am working on is from March. I realize it's April. I'm a little behind um, between the um, uh, trying to work on, on the um, Sheridan shawl and um, relocating and some of the things we're dealing with in the house that we're uh, currently staying at. Um, it's been a lot. So, um, what I am using for the March is Hobie's Horizon. And this is acrylic. I'm doing acrylic for the, the Boggy Creek. It's non allergenic. It's easy to throw in the washer. Um, this is 601 yards and it is a number three. And with this, and I believe I got this, um, not Black Friday, but on a sale that they had, I think I did $5 for these. And they're normally, I want to say like 15 or $15. Um, but I also got some bags of Black Friday skeins that um i think there was 10 skeins for 15 dollars and there is 360 yards in these and there's just a nice nice color match there and what have most of mine been that i send for boggy creek moss stitch this time what i'm doing with this is i am doing two colors. Um, this one I am using um, an H hook um, and um, again these are these are three which is is DK. I'm doing what I call chasing. I don't know um, if anyone else has done this. It's where you you crochet then you go back and you crochet with the second color. You do the first color, you chase it with the second color, so you're going back and forth. And I really like how this is turning out with the uh, gradation, color change, self-striping of this one, the horizon, and um, the complementary color uh, of the plain, the solid. Um, this is what it looks like. Isn't that pretty? I just, I wasn't sure how it would come out. I know that the, the changes are really showing up more than they do in real life, but I just think that's so pretty. Um, they need to be 30 to 35 inches by 40 to 
50 inches um, and you need to keep them until I know they're going to start in August, but I don't know if she's going to start collection or just encouraging people to do them. Um, I thought at one point she said she would not be collecting before October. Um, but they don't take up a lot of space. It's something to do with your time, and it's a great charity to do this for. These are kids that have medical conditions that normally would not be able to attend camp. Um, and they have medical staff volunteering that's there everything is volunteer that that is at the camp everything is donation um and they have it broken down so that if they have lung issues if they have blood issues if they have um, diabetes if they have cancer if they have all of these are broken down so that the doctors on staff are able to take care of the kids and it gives them an opportunity to experience something they would not normally be able to experience. Um, so if you are looking for something to do with extra time or extra yarn that you really like and would like to work with, this is a great way to test a pattern in a smaller, an afghan in a smaller size. It's a great way to utilize yarn that you have extra and it's a great way to test and use a yarn that you haven't used yet. Um, then I told you guys that in April I was going to have my own crochet along. And mine's a little different in that I'm going to take you through the process of how I design and do things. Um, I've done a couple of shawls, uh, capelet for a wedding for a bride. I've done uh, a shawl. I've done a birthday shawl. I've done um, you know, a couple of birthday shawls. I've done them white. I've done them variegated. Um, the bride uh, was very non-traditional. She had a little uh, gingham yellow and white dress and she loves bees. So I did it in a hexagon. I think it's hexagon, the six sided shape and had an opening for a capelet. Um, and I incorporated dimensional bees on it and um, some daisies. Um, the shawls, um, I always try to work a pattern so that it's personalized for them. The variegated one, uh, her birthday was May 11th. So I did a pattern that had, um, I think it was five different stitches and they each had 11 rows. And then I repeated that. Um, I think it was for her 40th birthday. I think it was 40th birthday so there was four times that I had repeated it and it just turned out because I started small and I went large and then I did put um, tassels on the ends um, because she likes fringe and I did tassels on, and I, the way I did the tassels on the corners is I did the tassel and then I chained a loop that was about three inches after it was doubled now three inches and it made it an inch and a half doubled and it was just enough that the tassel would hang down like an inch and a half and the way you do it is so that you you pull the let me do this you pull the loop down and pull the tassel through it and I did tell her to remove the tassels when she washed it and to wash it by hand um, I told her she needs help with that you know, just to roll it out in a blanket or blanket and towels um, because I had blocked it, had wet blocked it. It should be fine um, as long as she doesn't soak it too long. I told her just, you know, wash it and then uh, put it in the towels and then lay it flat to dry. Um, 
I did another one that I, um, the initials were an M and a Y, and it was a 30th birthday. So I did um, 10, I did three different patterns of 10 stitches each, and um, I just kept repeating that until it was the length that I needed. She wanted a very long one. Um, so I try to utilize something about the person to make up the pattern. This time I am doing something different. I'm doing an Afghan. Um, this, I, I think I, I told you guys that I do quilling for wedding invitations. It's a lot of talking on this one too. I am sorry. Um, quilling is very narrow papers and you twist it with a little tool that has a, a slit in the top and you can twill, turn it to twirl it. You can turn and, and twist it so that you end up like um, ribbon roses. Um, I've done all kinds of shapes with it. Um, sometimes I've added uh, actual little... Um, plastic uh, embellishments like doves um, so you know I've made um, paper lace bells that I put with ribbon at the so it just depends on the invitation and this is my uh, god brother's son that got married and it was the most unusual invitation I had seen. Didn't have pictures on it. It was very colorful and it was watercolors. And I don't know if it was watercolors she did or watercolors that somebody had done, someone she knew had done for it. It was very pretty. But the flowers were anywhere between the size of a dime up to the size of a quarter. And some of them were very watered and some of them were more defined. It was gorgeous. It had fuchsias and corals and orange and yellow and blue and teal and turquoise and green and chartreuse. It, it was gorgeous. And I told my mom, I said, I don't know what to do. It's, it's, I don't want to take away from it. What I ended up doing was laying um, cellophane over it, the um, saran wrap, cellophane clear plastic over it, the invitation. And then I mimicked what was on there for some of the flowers. And then I offset them or I set them onto the white and it turned out really quite well. Um, I was really surprised. I did a plain um, black shadow box and um, I think I did a pale gray, very pale gray for the mat board that I put the invitation on. Well, they are having their 10th anniversary and um, I have um, been asked if I would do something special for them. Um, and, oh yeah, I, no problem, got a couple months. I need to have this done by June 1st. So I'm gonna show you how I do this. Um, I ordered a pack from Hobie. Uh, this is color bag 11 and this is 8-4 which is fingering, it's 100% cotton. Now, they live in the south. It's very warm, and cotton can be very heavy, 
weight wise, but it's not, um, even though acrylic is lighter in, in the weight as far as what it actually weighs, it's actually much warmer than cotton because cotton will absorb. And so um, I did this, I had not enough greens, so I ordered another green. This one is Rainbow 100% Cotton 8-4. Um, these are number one, which, um, and this is color 84. So I ordered the, this color as well. Um, and then I had some pink that they had, uh, for Black Friday that I was going to do something else with and I still plan to. But um, this was a great deal, and um, like the acrylic, I don't remember. I want to say it was a bag of eight for $15, but it might have been like $10. Anyway, no, it must have been less because, yeah, it must have been $10 for the bag. Anyway, um that'll be coming up they'll have their black friday um in you know in november hobie has great values so keep that in mind um and this one is color 18 but those are nice let's try to do this so you can see all of the colors this is nice it gave, i wanted to do a uh, play off of the floral the colorful flowers from their wedding. So these are the colors. And what I did is I took them, I laid them out, and even though they're they're kind of complemented and paired up in the bag, um, I, I laid them out and I played with stitches. And originally, as you can tell because I'm all the start, things. Originally, I thought, oh, I can use this for a pillow, but I have changed it a little bit. That doesn't mean I won't finish this and use it as a complimentary pillow, but um, you can see the stitch I was kind of practicing with. So, um, But there's meanings to them. The groom's birthday is in November, so I did a chrysanthemum. Um, this one will be better. I have more practice on it. Um, then the tulips, I have tulips on there and the tulips, I'm doing 10 rows and I'm looking at the language, um, of flowers and for the tulips, um, perfect deep love is, is the language of the flower and I'm doing 10 rows. Then, um, the Chrysanthemum means devoted love, happiness, and joy. Then the groom's grandfather, I'm sorry, great-grandfather. Yeah, the groom's great-grandfather um, developed the black iris. So I, um, I, I just knew that he, he did irises, so I, I, I did this in like 11. And the way I did this stitch, um, this is one I did myself. It is where you put in the, um, like puff stitches, you know how you, you go in, you pull it up, and then I slip stitch, and I chained four. I did another uh, single loop through and pulled it up like like a puff stitch slipped it did four i did another one that's a single slipped it did four and a fourth one so i had three um chains and slip stitches then i took the yarn um hooked it around and then slipped it so it snugged those up 
and it to me it looks like an iris I think I think I did accomplish that and I did V stitches for for that then I did puff stitches and those will be for poppies and I'm eliminating, I'm just doing the B stitch. I'm going to eliminate this extra row. What I decided to do instead of single rows is I'm going to do 10 rows of the tulip for the 10 years they're married. Um, the groom is the third um, for the name. He has his, his grandfather's name, his dad's name. So I'm doing three rows of these because then I still have the great grandfather in there and the groom's family represented with those. And then the poppies would be um, from the groom's um, grandmother's side, um, which is my godmother. But um, I like the poppies, I like the orange color. And a poppy is um, peace and remembrance. And they were married 60 years, over 60 years. So in doing six rows of this. Then these I was playing with. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do pink like I did the chrysanthemum. I'm going to do it in, in pink because the bride's birthday is in January and that's carnation then I did do this the sweet pea on here but it takes a lot of yarn and it's very textural compared to the others so even though this this iris is when I take out this um, double crochet and I just go to the double it's it looks a little different so at this point, what I have, let me find an end that I can, and I'm doing the same thing. Remember I talked in the Boggy Creek about chasing? I'm doing the same thing with these colors. When I do it, I do one row, and then I follow the next row. So I do the leaf row, then I follow with the floral stitch, leaf row, floral stitch, so this is every other. I don't have to cut the ends. I've got, I've got the last end. I have no other ends to do. I am going to catch this last row of double crochets and do a continuation of this border, I think, um, along the side. And then I had um, the lavender color from the irises and this blue color that I haven't used in this yet, I'm going to do um, the final border on it. Um, so I'm using all of the colors. It's going to be very colorful. But this is, this is what I have. I have my chrysanthemum, my tulips, and I've only got two rows of the iris thus far. But I'm really pleased with the way that it is um, turning out, what it looks like. And I'm going to do um, I think I figured out I need four um, sections. So there'll be a row of this with the pink carnation in those. Um, and it'll have the same color on each side. It looked well with the the yellow and the pink looked well with the olive and the teal so that is what i'm working on um i wanted to give you an idea how i come up with um my inspiration so that maybe if there's something you guys want to do but you're just not sure how to come up with the ideas um it doesn't have to be really complicated just do something you like. Um, Judy's Creations has a monthly uh, inspiration that she does with the 
picture. And Nina has done, uh, Linan from Nina's Nats Crochet has done some really nice, I love the shawl she's working on this month. It's with the virus stitch and a variegated. And then she's got just granny stitches um, in a plane and it is coming out just gorgeous. Um, so that's what's going on. If you have any questions, please contact me. My information for contact will be below. Um, if you maybe want uh, to discuss some ideas or an idea, uh, need some help with ideas uh, as far as color combinations, I use a color wheel. Um, and sometimes just playing around setting the colors out but a picture inspiration is great. Um, if you're decorating and you're doing for someone, you know, the complimentary color, a pop, is, is great as far as um, within an afghan that has the colors that they're using or a pillow, um, a set of pillows. Um, it's a good time to be working on projects so that you're not ferociously trying to knit and crochet and Tunisian come November, hoping to get things done in December. Um, I don't generally gift during the year. I try to do special occasions. Um, this Afghan I'm doing will be their anniversary, but they know it's their birthday and their their birthdays as well and their Christmas and anything else um, but again if you if you have any questions if you um, would like to discuss some ideas please contact me um, I have now been chatting 37 minutes so I'm sure that I have made up for those weeks I haven't been here um, thank you for your patience. Um, enjoy your crafting. That's the most important. I don't have issues with frogging back and ripping out. Um, I like the end product, but I utilize the process as my way of um, mental health and relaxing and feeling like I have something in my life that I have some control over um, and, and a sense of accomplishment. So enjoy your crafting and thank you for coming by to play ball. I'll try to be not so long for the next one. Thank you.